Okay, just wanted to make a little video explaining how Stephen Anderson's followers, they can't handle scripture. And what they do is that they will look for, for little clips, they'll scour your videos looking for certain little clips they can take out of context to twist your words, but they'll cut out all the parts that contain scripture. And they, they've, done, they've done this with me countless times where they will uh, take a clip. I mean, just recently there's another example where a Stephen Anderson follower uh, took clips of a video where I was talking about the Trinity and another one where I was talking about repentance and just cut his little five second clips out, cut out all the part where I gave scripture, cut out all the parts where I showed from the word of God, uh, basically what it says, and took his little clips that says, see, look, he's saying that he's a heretic, Mark and avoid him, but they didn't actually deal with what I was saying in the scriptures. Because why? The cult can't handle scripture. You know, why? Because, you know, with a cult, the leader wants you to be, to be focused on him rather than the word of God. And, you know, I try to exalt the word of God above myself. I say, don't just listen to me. Actually, look in your Bibles yourself and follow along with what I'm saying. Don't just, you know, listen to me. Look in the Bible yourself. But with a cult like the Stephen Anderson group, uh, they don't do that. So if Stephen Anderson says it, that makes it so, pretty much. And if Stephen Anderson says that, oh, uh, like in one instance where it happened with Sam Gipp back in 2017, where Anderson took a little clip of Gipp out of context and, and basically twisted Gipp's words and you know ignored the two plus hours of scripture he gave because you know he couldn't answer it, obviously. So what do they do? Well, when the leader's attacked, you resort to straw man arguments, you resort to personal attacks, and you're, you'll see that a lot with these Anderson guys, just like with the example that happened to me, me recently. Uh, this Anderson follower was slandering me all over Instagram, making little funny memes about me. Just this morning, he made another meme, meme, about, meme about me. And this goes back to my point, too, of how I was saying that these guys have no power of God whatsoever. All they have is power of the internet. All they have is the power that powers their electricity. Sorry, the electricity that powers the internet router. I'll put it that way. They don't have power from God. They have power with a keyboard. See, they don't have... See, here's, here's, here's the difference between Bible-believing Christians and the Stephen Anderson cult, is that... With, bi with biblical born-again believers, we go to the Word of God to solve our problems. We go to the Word of God to figure out things. We go to the Word of God to, you know, solve conflicts with other believers, with other people who identify with the faith. But with Anderson's cult, when they want to do stuff like that, they go to the they go to YouTube videos. They go to the internet. They don't go to the Word of God. That's what separates Anderson's cult from biblical born-again believers. And, you know, it's, it's worth noting, too, that there have been many IFB pastors, even what they would call old IFB, that have been infiltrated by Anderson's little cult followers. And they'll go in there, they'll, they'll split churches in half. I mean, there's, there's an instance here in Canada where a Baptist church was infiltrated by Steve Anderson followers. I mean, it's all over the place. I mean, I remember Gip one time even saying, too, that every single week there's he gets a new call from a pastor telling him, you know, here's what Anderson's people are doing. They're, they're infiltrating my church. Yeah. You know, this is part of the reasons why I spend so much time exposing Anderson's little group there, because they're not just, you know, okay, it, like, you know, like the Westboro Baptist Church, they are secluded to one little area. But with Anderson, they're they're growing, and they're sending their wolves into other churches that try to either steal sheep and send them to Phoenix, or convert that church over to Anderson's false doctrines. So, that's part of the reason why I go after and They say, oh, you're, Anderson's living, Anderson, he's living rent-free in your head. Well, uh, so apparently, I guess when Paul in Acts chapter 20, verse uh, 28 to 31, when he says, I, you know, for the space of three years, I cease not day and night to warn everyone with tears, paraphrasing, of course, I guess that means that the, the false prophets he was warning about were living rent free in his head. I mean, it's ridiculous. And they quote, you know, Titus 3.10, just like Brian Dellinger does as well. It's a bunch of, uh, see, because again, they don't like having their leader criticized. So they will quote scripture. And again, when you criticize the leader, they'll try to take a clip out of context you know, ignore the scripture because, like I said, they cannot deal with scripture. They cannot handle the word of God because all they do is get talking points from Steve Anderson, pretty much. They just parrot talking points. How do I know that? Because I used to do it myself when I was part of the group. And all their talking points are just either word for word the same as what Anderson says, but not from the word of God. And here's actually a scripture I want to point out, too, that kind of ties into this. It is Psalms 35, verse 21. It says, Yea, they opened their mouth, see, sorry, yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, aha, aha, Ara has seen it. You know, they'll look for, look through my videos and find something, oh, see, aha, Ara has seen it. Because they can't deal with the, with the, you know, scores of verses I would give because it contradicts something Steve Anderson says, and for them, that's, that's enough to prove that I'm lost.
So I wanted to point that out. With any cult out there, you'll always try to get away from the Word of God. And with the Steve Anderson group, if Steve Anderson says it, that makes it official. You know, they're, they're more afraid. Here's what it comes down to. There's, there's no independence whatsoever in the so-called new IFP because these guys are more afraid of, of contradicting Anderson than they are of offending God. That's, that's a blunt and brutal reality of it all. So don't be deceived by the Stephen Anderson cult. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.